So welcome or welcome back to Fair for Fray. For the last case for this week, we are going back to Vegas. This case is another case that's not as well known. Of course, it is another child death. So if that is a trigger for you, I'm giving you that warning in advance. Um, because I feel for the child death cases. Well, all cases are obviously bad because someone does eventually want to get murdered. And in most cases, they obviously don't deserve it. But this child definitely not deserve what happened to him. And so with this case being not as well known, I felt that I should always cover it. Because I haven't seen any other YouTuber that I can think of that's covered it. So, that being said, I'm going to quit my rambling. Let me know your thoughts down below. And let's go and get started. So, Roger Arrington Jr. was born on June 13, 2005. His mother, Dina, was born sometime in 1985. And originally, Roderick was actually living with his father, Roderick Sr. In November of 2011, Dina would move his, his mother, Dina's, which is, okay, this is Roderick's Jr.'s mother. Dina moves to California to marry Marquise Palmer, who said he'd been born sometime in 1978. And apparently he grew up in rural Arkansas. He studied business management. And he wrote a book with the title called Poor. Like, not poor, like, financially poor, but, like, poor, like, like you were with some water, okay? And so, apparently, it only sold a few thousand copies. He had a failed relationship and apparently had his uh, prized possessions take away, taken away. So, then in August of uh, 2012, uh, Roderick's tenure will make the fateful decision to send RJ to go live in Vegas with Dina and Marquise. Because, you know, this is, a, this is a boy. He needs, like, every boy needs to go live, needs their mother. So, then on November 27th, 2012, Marquise White apparently had assigned Roderick Jr. I want to call him RJ, just so there's no confusion, because he is named after his father. So we're going to call him RJ, you know, because Roderick Jr. So, and that was his nickname, so yeah. So Marquise had assigned RJ to read a psalm from the book of Psalms from the Bible. And then it said that they were actually, apparently they had beat him really hard on this day. They had beat him with a belt, with a belt, cord, spatula, wouldn't handle and apparently this is a pretty severe beating because he went to school the next day but he couldn't like properly sit down so that's how you know it's bad you can't even properly sit down and so the teachers noticed this and they called cps that same day so then roger could apparently at one point would speak to the social worker and say yeah i am being uh he was he was being beaten with a broom handle spatula a belt he was admitting yeah i was getting beat and then they invest okay so then the reporter from the school didn't check his butt which apparently, I guess, that's like a thing that they do. They actually check to see, like, where the bruises are, even if it's their butt. And I guess he, I guess the reporters didn't check it. So then, but they asked for investigators for, like, further assistance. So I guess, I guess y'all can do it. But then that wasn't done. So then, he, despite the obvious abuse, he goes back to the house. And it says that he is beaten again for not doing his homework. And eventually, it gets to the point to where RJ does eventually become unresponsive. And then they call a pastor. The pastor's like, y'all need to call 911 because... I'm just a man. I can pray, but like y'all need to go to the actual medical people, the people that could actually get this, the, get this child some help. So then they go to the hospital. Um, poli staff, the hotel, hotel, hospital staff call police after they notice that there's brain swelling and he has like a bunch of bruising. Because apparently that's protocol, you know, to be called. You suspect abuse. And then RJ did sadly die on November thirtieth. So then Dina and Marquise, now that RJ is dead, they're charged with child neglect and murder. So then Marquise was like, look, I only ever uh, punished RJ twice. And the first time, apparently, was after he moved to Vegas for lying. And the second time was because Roger apparently told him that, oh, I hate you and you're not my father. Yeah. And he was like, well, I did talk to Dina beforehand, before I actually punished him, because that is her child and not my child. And she was there, but she was a witness, just so she knew I wasn't going too far. And she even participated. Now, this story is believed to be what happened. Because this is after Roger had died, but obviously we have his, we have Dina and Marquise. So then Marquise would basically say, yeah, we beat him because he had lied about memorizing a Bible verse. And basically lying about reading his, about lying about reading his Bible, like, in general. And so, like, remember how I said earlier, like, he, uh, RJ had been beat on, like, the 28th for not having his homework done. So he says, oh, well, on that night, the night that I beat him for not having his homework done, apparently, uh, you know, I decided I'd to go punch him with a belt. And then RJ decided, you know... To run up me with his fist. So I grabbed him and I shook him. So then Dina would say that she um, hit Roger with a, a belt and a paddle. And then Marquise would say that Roger was running down the stairs. And then he winds up hitting his head on the table. And then Marquise had got Roger up and apparently told him to go take a bath. And then he had put cocoa butter on the wounds that was obviously on R RJ's butt at this point. So then of course RJ says that he feels like throwing up. 
after he was sent to bed. And then they apparently find him unresponsive around 6.30 a.m. on the 29th. And Marquise, this is the first time I've ever seen a killer having to do this, so I just thought I should mention this. Apparently, he was ordered to actually pay money for RJ's headstone, but only just $1,000. And as we know, a headstone obviously costs more, way more than that. But yeah, he was paid to he was made to pay for the headstone. So then a CPS um, hotline employee named J Jadon Davis was fired as a result of RJ's death. And apparently this is because there's like a three-tier system. And he put on tier two, even though he kind of qualified. He technically qualified for the top tier. And because apparently tier two was like a 24-hour response. Whereas the top tier was a three-hour response time. So the response would have been different. Basically saying like RJ would still been alive. But they he apparently had appealed it. And they hired him back after seeing that he actually did follow instructions. So then Dina was sentenced to 16 to 40 years. And then Marquise was sentenced to life without parole. And that's pretty much all we have on the death of Roderick Arrington Jr. Uh, if anybody know anybody knew Roderick personally, if anybody knows how the dad is doing, because said the dad was going through it, understandably, because that was his son, and that he feels guilty that he sent him to Dina, not knowing that that would be what happened to them. Well, what is what happened to his son? So if anybody if anybody knew Dina, anybody knew Marquise, if anybody knows how the family's doing now, because it's happened back in like 2012, I think, yeah. So 12 years ago, but still, like, RJ would be, like, almost 18 now. Or, no, he would be 18 now. Yeah, he would be 18, but be 19. So, that being said, um, that's all I have for this case. Definitely know your thoughts down below. That's the last case for this week. I'm here for you guys three times every Friday, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So with the play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing. And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I 